China has achieved a significant medical milestone. They have successfully cured a diabetes patient. How so? Using a pioneering cell therapy, after only three months of treatment, the patient was no longer dependent on insulin injections. Our next report telling you more. There just might be hope for those suffering from diabetes. In a significant medical milestone, Chinese scientists have successfully cured a patient's diabetes. How did they achieve this feat? Using a groundbreaking cell therapy. A team from Shanghai Changzheng Hospital, the Center for Excellence in Molecular Cell Science and Renji Hospital have developed this treatment. All the details have been detailed in the journal Cell Discovery. The patient underwent the cell transplant in July 2021. Within 11 weeks, he no longer required external insulin. If you or someone you know has diabetes, you could understand how tedious these insulin shots can be. Fortunately, the patient did not need them anymore. Over the next one year, he gradually reduced taking oral medication for blood sugar control, reaching a point when he didn't need them at all. Follow-up examinations showed that the patient's pancreatic functions were effectively restored. How did that happen? The new therapy involved programming the patient's blood cells. It transformed them into seed cells to recreate pancreatic islet tissue in an artificial environment. Let me break that down for you. Our body needs insulin to maintain blood glucose levels. The pancreatic islet tissue contains beta cells that release insulin. In diabetes, these cells stop working, so body stops producing its own insulin. It becomes dependent on external factors for that. That's why patients need insulin injections and constant monitoring. However, the new cell therapy can transform some of the patient's blood cells into seed cells. These cells can function as the beta cells of the pancreatic islet tissue and release insulin. Therefore, a diabetes patient doesn't need to depend on external insulin anymore. This approach leverages the body's regenerative capabilities. It's an emerging field known as regenerative medicine. China can significantly benefit from the new treatment. After all, it has the highest number of diabetes patients globally. 140 million people in China have diabetes. 40 million rely on lifelong insulin injections. This new cell therapy could significantly reduce this burden. Bureau Report, we on World is One. Papua New Guinea is still trying to deal with the impact of the landslide that hit the, hit the country on Friday. The government fears 2,000 dead, a figure with much higher than the UN estimates. Rescue efforts are underway, but the treacherous terrain and adverse weather are posing complications. Will the rescuers be able to save the survivors? Our next report telling you more. In the early hours of Friday, as most people slept, a landslide tore through Papua New Guinea. Some villagers say it felt like an exploding bomb. The government fears 2,000 have been buried alive. The United Nations, however, puts the figure at 670. Six villages have been affected in total. More than 150 houses have been buried beneath debris. Some even two stories high. Take a look at these satellite images. This is what the affected Inga province looked like before the disaster. Now, it looks something like this. You can imagine the extent of damage here. The government ordered thousands of residents to evacuate from the path of the landslide. Even after four days, the landslide remains active. Rescue efforts are currently underway. But the treacherous terrain is making it difficult for help to arrive. Rescuers are battling in the face of adverse weather conditions and the risk of further landslides. To make matters worse, a bridge has collapsed on the main route for shipping aid and equipment to the site of the landslide. If the region experiences any more rainfall in the near future, it could lead to another unprecedented disaster. This is what an expert had to say.
it's an extraordinarily complicated relief operation because leaving aside the fact that it's a very remote area, um, this was not only a very significant landslide, but the terrain is continuing to move. So my team that were actually at the site yesterday, they said they could even feel the ground moving under them and the ground moving around them. It's much more slowly. For the time being, search parties are relying on manual labor. The locals have been desperately trying to locate the survivors. They are using sticks and bear hands to dig through mud. They are trying to rescue whatever they can uh, by using digging sticks, spades, agricultural forks, and their hands, of course. I have 18 of my family members buried under the debris and soil that I'm standing on. And a lot more family members in the village I cannot count. I'm the landowner here. Thank you to all those who have come to help us. But I cannot retrieve the bodies, so I'm standing here helplessly. Those who were fortunate enough to find the bodies were seen mourning their loved ones. Provincial authorities have requested the international community to send engineers to carry out a geohazard assessment. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has also expressed grief over the disaster. He says that India is ready to offer all possible support and assistance. Bureau Report, we on. Wild is one. next story is disturbing to say the least you see the least we can do as a society is to safeguard our children they are vulnerable they need to be nurtured protected they are after all our future but unfortunately their future is being snatched away from them what am I talking about the sale of children ads online Yes, that's right. A disturbing trend. A surge in social media accounts advertising children for sale in the form of illegal adoptions. Can you believe that? It makes my blood boil. And there are serious concerns here because this could enable dangerous forms of exploitation. According to a report, Philippines' social welfare agency has found pages involved in the sale of children with some being peddled by their parents themselves and the scary part is that according to activists unauthorized adoptions could lead to sexual exploitation of children and what do they suggest they are calling for stronger law enforcement and public awareness campaigns. As per the report, the National Authority for Child Care has been tracking about two dozen accounts involved in the sale of children since last year and turned over their findings to the Philippine National Police to apprehend the perpetrators. How can children be treated as commodities? It's disgusting and appalling to say the least. And it gets worse. Let me get you some numbers here. According to the International Justice Mission, nearly 500,000 Filipino children were trafficked into sexual exploitation for profit in 2022, with nearly 250,000 adults behind these trafficking schemes. And it's not just the Philippines. The practice of selling children is prevalent in other countries like Malaysia as well, with social media pages and websites offering babies who are in need of a loving home. Let me tell you something even more disturbing. Research suggests that more than 300 million children across the globe are victims of online sexual exploitation and abuse each year. More than 300 million children. We also told you earlier about an assessment released by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. It is a U.S.-based child protection organization. Its report essentially says that child sexual exploitation is on the rise online. And what's even scarier is that AI-generated Im AI images are playing a part. There was also a rise in reports of financial sexual extortion. Let me tell you more about how this actually works. The child would be lured into sending nude images or videos and then the predators ask for money. Also reports regarding online enticement. 
were up 300 percent from 2022. What is that, you ask? Basically, it involves an individual communicating online or with someone believed to be a child with the intent to commit a sexual offense or abduction. And like I said, AI is also playing a role. As per the organization, some children and families were extorted with AI-generated photos and videos. Imagine children being seen in deep fakes. And here's a direct fallout of this menace. AI-generated child abuse content hampers the identification of real child victims. So, you see, there are serious ramifications. That children are being subjected to horrific acts like these is heartbreaking, infuriating, and scary. Why should anyone have to go through this? Our children do not deserve all of this. Our future does not deserve this.